city and, and I never get to spend much time there. Uh, but they have this film festival there. It's, it's called IDFA, and it's the premier documentary film festival in the world, I guess, or one of them. And, and uh, they invited Kevin and, and me to come do this at, at IDFA, and it was really great because we're there for eight days. And, and uh, I love that town. I love walking around in Amsterdam. And, and for about three days, it was really, really foggy. And that was really cool because you just walk around in these great old buildings that just come looming out of the fog. It was really, really nice, and, and it was like Jack the Ripper weather. It was really great. And, uh, and while I was there, I was emailing a friend of mine in Germany who we were going to see when, after we finished touring Holland, and I said, hey, I'm, I'm in Amsterdam. I'm, I'm loving it. We're here for eight days. I'll, I'll see you in, in a couple of weeks. Um, is there anything you might want me to bring you from Amsterdam? I was thinking like cheese or something, and uh, and he said, "Well, no, we have we have really good cheese here in Germany." But but he said, if you happen to go by one of those coffee shops they have in Amsterdam, you might bring me something from there. Do you guys know about the coffee shops in Amsterdam? And, well, I don't know much about them, um, and I didn't promise him I, that I would do anything. But um, I'm a little. Um, nervous about going into a coffee shop. I've never been in one. I don't understand the coffee shop culture um, because I've never had a cup of coffee. So I just don't understand. So, But I was walking through the fog one night and this all of a sudden this sign starts to appear and the sign gets brighter and brighter and then all of a sudden it says coffee and I thought I'm going to do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get my courage up and I'm going to go in here and I'm going to buy something for my friend in Germany. And so I walked in and I walked up to the counter real bravely and young man at the counter and I said, Hi, I would like some hashish, please. <laughs> and he looked at me kind of funny and then he, uh, he beckoned for this other guy to come over and, and the other guy was the manager and he whispered something to the manager and the manager came around and grabbed me by the arm and he sort of took me to the front door and he opened the door and he pushed me out onto the sidewalk and said, Get out and don't come back. And I said, well, you don't have to worry about that. I will never set foot in Starbucks again. I still don't know what went wrong. Maybe I should try that again. I don't
nothing else like it I've found choice, not by circumstance. A lot of the homeless people in America we have are, are, are homeless just because like one bad break happened and, and all of a sudden they couldn't pay their rent or something and then they are living in their car or something. And uh, So Blaze wasn't like that. Uh, he was homeless by choice, but he was homeless still and, uh, and that meant he didn't have a say in where he slept a lot of the time and uh, you know if he could sleep on someone's couch he was fine but sometimes he had to sleep outside and he was fine with that and it might be cold and it might be raining or snowing even and, and that was just that was his choice you know and uh, it's not an easy life and uh, and he also was not above sleeping in jail sometimes he would go to jail he had this amazing sense of justice and this code of honor that he lived by and uh, sometimes his his code of honor would require him to go to jail and he was fine with that and uh, so he wrote this song this is called baby can i crawl back to you <laughs> Sitting in a jailhouse, counting my dough, ran out of money, but 
but I got a place to go. I ought to be leaving in a day or two. Get myself together, can I come back to you? Baby, can I crawl back to you? Baby, can I crawl back to you? Buy me some insurance, pay it to the brim. Jump in a river and I might learn to swim. I might learn to swim, but I might just drown. Got that insurance, pay it down. Turn all over to you. this request that I got and it wasn't it wasn't a request here tonight it wasn't someone asking me to play a Blaze Foley song or, or to play one of my songs um, this request I got over the telephone back in Austin where I live um, and this guy called up one day and asked for me and explained that he was calling from a funeral home in Austin and he said they had this person at their funeral home and this person was a deceased person, a dead person, who had just showed up unannounced somehow. And they couldn't find out who this guy was. They tried to find out who this dead guy was, and they couldn't find any friends, any relatives, no identification. Um, and he said it was, it was fairly obvious that it was a homeless person. And then he said while he was going through the guy's pockets, whatever he, whatever little stuff he had with him, he found something that led him to believe that the guy was somewhat of a songwriter or a poet type homeless person. And, uh, and then he said since the guy was a songwriter, homeless guy with no friends, no relatives or anything, he, he thought it would be a really nice gesture if they would uh, donate a burial for this guy and so they worked out a deal with this cemetery to, to bury this guy for free and I said that is really really amazing I just I can't believe you're doing that um, what does this have to do with me and he said well I thought that since you kind of write songs about homeless people sometimes and, and um, maybe since there's not going to be anyone at the cemetery when this guy gets buried tomorrow maybe you could come out and sing a song to send him off and I, I said that's that's really really amazing I would I would be honored to do that I would, I would absolutely uh, come do that and so he gave me directions to the cemetery I'd never been out there and, and uh, so I drove out the next morning with my guitar and I, I found out pretty quickly that the directions were not very good and I got lost and, uh, and I couldn't find it. I was driving around, driving around, trying to find the cemetery, starting to get worried because I'm starting to be pretty late and uh, I promised them I'd be there at a certain time and I was starting to be like 20 minutes late, 25 minutes late and I'm, I'm, I'm compulsively on time. I, if I'm going to be five minutes late for something, I want to stop and call and tell people that I'm not going to be there when I said I was going to be. And there was no one to call, so I was really sort of panicked. And then somehow I found the cemetery, and I was really thankful. And then I drove all the way through the cemetery, and I couldn't find a burial site going on anywhere. And uh, I thought, well, maybe I missed it, and I... I didn't really know what to do. I was just sitting there in my car trying to decide what to do. And then I looked out the window way over, way off in the distance, way past any gravestones, um, past all the grass. I wasn't even sure if it was still cemetery over there, but I saw what looked like might be a work crew. So I decided I better go walking over there and check that out because maybe that was it. And uh, so I went walking over there with my guitar, and as I got closer, I am coming up on these guys. I realized it was three guys. They were working. They had a digging machine, and they were filling in a hole. And I thought, oh, I did miss it. And, and uh, I thought, no, I, I got to do this. I promised this guy a song. So I went walking up to where these guys are working with my guitar, and I, I didn't have a plan. I just like to, just like to wing it sometimes. I just do it, see what comes into my head. So uh, I walked up, and while they were working, I just started singing. 
and I sang a song uh, that I wrote for a, a couple of friends of mine. Uh, one of them died. I, I wrote this song for a friend of mine who died, and so I sang that song, and uh, and that seemed like a, an okay thing to do. And the workmen just kept working; they're just looking at me. And and when I finished that song, I thought, oh, this will be great. I'll sing, "Will the Circle Be Unbroken?" You guys know that song? It's a it's a great song, and it's about a burial at a cemetery, and and. Uh, so I started singing, Will the Circle Be Unbroken? And the, and the workmen stopped working, and they're just standing there listening to me. And I started thinking, this is pretty cool. And uh, So when I finished, Will the Circle Be Unbroken? That's when I had my moment of brilliance. I had this brilliant idea. Uh, I thought it was brilliant anyhow. I thought, I'll sing Amazing Grace, and then without... When I'm done, without having said a word to these guys, I will just turn and I will just slowly walk off into the distance. And it, it'll be really, they won't know what just happened, you know. And uh, I'd never sung Amazing Grace before, but I figured I knew enough words. I've, I've heard that hundreds and hundreds of times. So, uh, and so I started singing Amazing Grace, and I, I didn't have any problem with the words, but while I was singing the song, I started thinking about this homeless man in a box in the hole in the ground in front of me, and I started thinking about homeless people, and I started thinking about Blaze Foley, and I started getting really, really sad, and I started crying while I was singing Amazing Grace, and it's like, oh man, this is really heavy, and, and then at one point, I, I was just having a hard time getting through the song, I just wanted to finish it, and then I looked over at the workmen, and a couple of them were crying too, and I went, oh man. So I sort of um, sobbed my way to the end of the song, and and I just took my guitar off, and I just stood there holding my guitar, and I was I was kind of like trembling, and uh, and one of the workmen came over to me, and he put his arms around me, and he gave me this big long hug. And it's like by this time I'm just crying, and. and and so he hugged me, and then he stepped back, and I look at him, and he's got tears coming down his cheeks, and he said, I have never, ever, ever seen anything like this before in all my 23 years of installing septic tanks. <laughs> I'm a genius. <laughs> so then I had to figure out what to do then to save myself. So I uh, I started playing some more. I played I played about twenty more minutes. Uh, I sold two CDs. <laughs> And I, uh, I handed them my business card, and then I turned and walked slowly into the distance. So, uh, it's just kind of perfect. So. <laughs>